Hi everybody, Scory here, and here is another live time training video. Today's video is about getting multi GP and your FPV club all set up and ready to go with live time. So I'm going to start you from the very beginning. We're going to go through a lot of things quickly to get right to the multi GP part, but there's a lot to learn here. So I encourage you to take a look at the live time scoring website, check out the other training videos that are there to learn more, and I'll certainly be posting more as we go. But let's get started. Let's say you are brand new to LiveTime and would like to give it a try. The first thing you need to do is go to LiveTimeScoring.com and click on the Login Register section in the upper right corner. You're going to want to click the Create Account button here and you're going to want to select under Account Type FPV. That is for drone racing. It'll tie up to a special FPV version of LiveTime that you'll be downloading and uh, fill out the rest of this uh, information. Uh, a lot of this is going to be posted on your portal, which I'll show you a little bit later. Um, be sure to also give some thought as to what you'd like to reserve for your web portal address. So here we have an example of John's RC Raceway. If that was the name of my raceway, I could type that name in here, and we reserve whatever you type in, .livefpv.com. It's a nice portal with a whole bunch of information that is all your results. It also shows your live streaming, etc. So you definitely want to check that out and choose the right name. So go ahead and fill out the form here and, and hit Create Account. We give you a free subscription. There's always going to be a free tier for the FPV account for you to work with um, and then once that's set uh, go ahead and click on the download section in the live time menu at the top select scoring engine that's the main piece of software that's used for timing your races and choose the FPV edition underneath the tab then click download to actually uh, download the software I've already done that installed it and now I have an icon on my desktop called live time and in brackets the FPV that's the edition you want to get if it says anything else you downloaded the wrong edition go back to the site and make sure you download the FPV one so I'm gonna go ahead and double click this to fire it up I'm going to type in the login and password that I've created for my account and this is creating from scratch a brand new database locally for me to work with to uh, run live time when I first go in here, there's a couple of key things I'll need to set up before I can continue. And I do it from left to right. Lifetime sets itself all up to kind of read like a book. So you're going to go left to right doing the things in order. So I have to create a track. I have to tell it what class I'm going to run. So right now there's an open FPV class that I'll be creating. But in the future you might have a spec class or maybe you have an inductrix or something else that you want to break apart. You're able to do that. And then we'll go to the event section and we'll start... Uh, we'll import the multi-GP event, then we'll set up and make sure all the pilots are registered for that event. We'll create our heats and mains, and really because we're doing multi-GP, they're already created. I'm just going to import them. And then we'll go ahead and start running races. So I'm going to click on tracks first, and let's just say I want to create a you know outdoor uh, track. Um, maybe you have a location you want to name this after, maybe there's a certain forest or some park that it's named after or something, whatever makes sense for you for the facility. Um, I'm going to hit save here and once I save it you'll notice that it's selected, it's part here, part of this little guide section here as well and here's where I can set up the different sound effects I want to use, what announcements I want to have made, I can look at records, if you have a printer, some printer setup, a lot of detail here, I won't go into it right now, that's set up in other videos, but certainly check this stuff out. Next I'm going to go to classes and I'm going to select open FPV or rather type it in. Um, I can choose a color that goes along with this, so if you have multiple classes you can give the different colors to make them pop out on reports or displays, that sort of thing. I'll just keep the default. We have categories, global tracking categories, for different classes. This, uh, I'm going to say this is you know a quad class, it's an open FPV. As things grow and as we have more classes, we're going to be able to split these things apart, allow people to be able to discover events that are coming up that run spec classes or open classes that they want to be a part of. Things like that as well all exist here. I'll go ahead and hit save and now this class is set. And there's a whole bunch of settings around how I want to run classes. That's certainly another piece for another video, but just to kind of point out here, this is where you're going to set up minimum times, if you want some kind of delay or you want to ignore the first lap that has the whole shot and that sort of thing, you can set all of that kind of stuff up here um, going forward. Next, 
I'm going to go to events. Now by default, Lifetime can completely run without a connection to multi-GP, so it's putting you right into the system here saying, okay, you want to create a local event and, and run and go forward with it. But why do that? You've already created the uh, what multi-GP calls a race in their website. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up and attach to multi-GP and we're just going to pull that right down from the website here. In order to do that, I need to go to the multi-GP part of LiveTime. You can click this icon in the upper right corner and right now it's white, meaning it's turned off. There's no integration set up, nothing to sync, everything is turned off. When I click on this, you'll also notice there's nothing to sync, you know, it's, it's telling you it's off, and there's not even any login or password information. So the very first thing you actually need to do here is type in your multi-GP login and password, which is what I'm going to do right now. Um, this is the same uh, password that you use to actually get into the site, and if you organize uh, races or events, this is the login you'd want to use. Once you put it in once, Lifetime will remember that login. You won't have to type this in again. Once I connect, everything will be set and you'll notice that subsequently when you open up Lifetime again it'll just immediately log you in and it'll use that account to retrieve your information sync results back up to multi GP and all of that and you'll see I logged in here and here's my information okay I'm going to now turn on the multi GP integration I'm going to tell it to automatically start every time I, I go back into Lifetime so I don't need to turn it on every time I fire it up and then I'm also going to say turn on the integration you'll notice at this point it went green, meaning everything is connected and ready to go. This also opens up all the multi-GP buttons and options in the software, which I'll point out some here in a minute. All right, now that we're all set, I'm going to go back to the event section here, and you'll notice now in the upper right corner, I have an option to be able to import from multi-GP. So I'm going to click on that, and by default, it gives you the first 20 or so events that are coming up that are, that are ready to go on multi-GP. Maybe you're an event that's really close, and you can just pick it right out of the list, which is fine, but I already have an event that I know of and I, I've set up on a site, so I'm going to just tab over to it here, um, and here it is. Now, when you're in any event in multi-GP, you do have this URL at the top, and as part of it, it has a number. Um, there are four-digit numbers right now, but I imagine they go to five pretty soon for all the events that are in the races that are coming up. But that unique ID, you can actually type into Lifetime to search for it. Or you can just search by the name. So I'm just going to go back here, 8385. And if I type in 8385, you'll notice it comes up with one result that's right there. If I clear this out, and instead, I go and I type um, live time, which is the fictitious event name here that's, uh, that's there. You'll notice that it starts filtering down, and here it is as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And when I do that, a preview of what I'm about to import shows up. First of all, it's going to say, hey, I need to import all of these pilots under a specific class. It's going to get default to the first one that you created in the class list. But if you have others, you can select the, select the drop down to choose it. Next, it's going to show you all the pilots that it's about to bring into the system. So right now I'm starting completely clean. There's no pilots in the system whatsoever, so everybody is new. And you'll see there's a little plus next to it. If you move your mouse over it, it says new. So that's a great way to kind of see all the people you're about to bring in locally. Um, however, if you in the future create bring in other events from multi-GP with some of the same pilots, which you probably will be doing, you'll notice instead there's a little refresh arrow that's next to the uh, icon. That means we're going to refresh the pilot, update it, put the newest, if they changed their name or they adjusted their call sign or something like that, we will adjust that in the local system as well for you. Next is frequencies. Here's the frequencies that you had set up for your event. And here are the races that are in the event in the round. So right now I can kind of just browse here for a minute. There are, looks like there's three rounds we're going to be bringing in. And, okay, there's three heats in the first round. I'll go to the Q2, three heats in the second. And click on any one and I can see where they are. You'll also see the slot that they're assigned to. Notice that's two, three, and four. We created a bit of a tricky um, scenario here just to kind of point some things out. If I go back to the multi-GP event and I take a look, you'll notice that in some of these cases, I'll go to all races just to illustrate it, the heat first heat of the first round has two, three, and four slots filled, but one and five are empty. So Lifetime recognizes that and will actually um, only put those in those slots as well, two, three, and four. So here's back to round one, one, two, three, and four. So it lines up. These things, the drone numbers need to say the same so they can sync back and forth once the results are complete. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit import here. 
and give it just a moment and it'll tell me, okay, the event live time has been imported successfully. I'll hit okay. It'll immediately select that event and go right into it. And here is the event setup screen in live time. Here are the classes you're running and the settings. Here are all the frequencies that we brought in. Here are all the registrations or the pilots that were brought in for the event. Um, and yeah, it looks like we're all set. So at this point, I'm just going to keep going from left to right. So the next section is the pilots. Here's all the guys I brought in. Nothing really to do here. They're already in the system. We already got their name, their call sign. We've already got their uh, class and that they're registered. Um, I'm going to skip practice because we're going to go right to racing, but you certainly could fire up practice and start doing some practice um, laps as well if you wanted to. But the next section here, the heat mains, here's the setup. I wanted to point out a couple of things going on here, which are that the um, that the rounds and races right now, so Q1, Q2, and Q3, all the same guys are here that we saw from before. Um, however, uh, we did kind of mix it up. So you go round two and you notice there's different guys in different slots. We just did that to illustrate a point. Live time can mix it up each round and bring it all in for you so you don't need to, to re-scramble or do anything manually. Um, there's a couple of buttons I want to point out though. The first is these yellow buttons right here. This is a refresh. Let's say you have a pilot that comes in late. You can hit a button here and they'll, it'll refresh this race. And if it discovers there's new pilots that haven't been brought into the system yet, it will import them and bring them in too. So we try to take a lot of work away from what you otherwise would have to do manually uh, with live time. So just to illustrate that point, I'm going to remove from the race here 4 and 2. Uh-oh, my whole system is screwed up. I don't have the same stuff as multi-GP. The race is about to begin. What do I do? You just click the button here, say, hey, we're going to refresh this, give it a moment, and it should bring two and four back in for you just the way it was before, and then you can go ahead and run the race, which you see right here. Um, additionally, if you build additional rounds after the fact, you can also use this add missing rounds and the system will tack on any rounds in the future that it didn't originally have when it originally synced to multi-GP. So just keep that in mind as well. If you imported a round but didn't want to sync it back to multi-GP, you can select to change a round to a practice round by hitting this button. This will change to P1 and then any of the results from that, that uh, race in that round will not go back up to multi-GP. I'm going to show you something really quick. I'm going to go back to the multi-GP setup and I'm going to click on sync options. There's a couple of quick options here that I want to point out. Multi-GP right now, whenever you finish a race, no matter what format you run, whether what kind of um, seating you're running, the system is going to send the lap count as the points back to multi-GP because that's how it is by default. However, if you want to override that and use the points that lifetime actually calculates, you do have that option to choose here. Additionally, by default, we do not sync practice rounds and that's unchecked. If, however, you do want to do that, just check this box here and then go ahead and run your race and then it will sync it um, just like it's going to sync qualifying rounds. Okay, so we're all set. So we've talked about how to import the event, we've checked the pilots, we've made sure the heat mains are all set up. It's time to run some races. So if I click on race, here's the first race and that first round, um, or first heat in the first round, um, that the, uh, the system has in place. So you can definitely hook up a variety of different systems. We'll make videos and, and continue to support that. Um, you know, like Event Tracker, iLab Track Meet, that sort of thing. Um, but I do want to point out that you can even run races manually by using your keyboard. So just find the key that corresponds to the drone number and you'll get a manual lap. So um, two, three, and four on your keyboard will count two, three, and four for the pilot shown here. I'm going to make one quick change. There's a flyout here when I click it, I can say I'm going to turn the minimum lap to zero. So we can do some real fast laps and not have to wait. Um, just to also point out, all these buttons along the side are all different options that pop out. So columns let you turn on and turn off different columns that you can see. You can also click and drag and reorganize columns. You can choose different colors that you want backgrounds and things to be or what they want to flash. Um, we even have uh, camera setups that we can... Um, help you set up a full camera switching stream as well. Please let us know, we'd be happy to help you through that process. And on the right hand side is all data information that's calculating live as you're running races. 
Um, if you want to see what races are coming up, you can use the race browser to kind of peek ahead. You can use the race laps to get an idea of the exact laps that are coming through. We have a lineup that gives you the full order of what to expect crossing the finish line, estimated positions, and even analysis that lets you say, hey, here's somebody. What are all the races they ran? Great for announcers that want to have a little bit of history of, oh, yeah, we're in the third or fourth uh, round now. What did that guy run the first three rounds? Great to bring up there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit start, and we're going to start just counting some laps here. So I hit two, three, four, two, three, four, and I continue to go on here. I'll make a, a change here real quick, a couple of uh, changes, and then I'm going to just quickly finish the race by hitting finish. Now the system's going to warn me, hey, you're about to finish a race here, uh, but it doesn't look like it's completely done. Are you sure? And I'm just going to hit yes and move on. Now, the moment I do that, this this one is going to finish and then immediately start syncing these results to multi-GP. You see this green section up here with the multi-GP icon? That's going to turn yellow when it's starting to sync. Then when it's done, it's going to go back to green. Watch, I'll hit yes, and we'll see that very thing happen here. It'll flicker for a moment. It's syncing all the results up to multi-GP. Once it's done, it will turn green, and then we'll be able to go to the site. Okay, it's all done. Multi-GP is completely synced up and has all the results now. Um, how do I know? Let's go back to the site and look. If you remember the site or have it bookmarked, you could just go back to it. But if you, have, if you forget or you just want a quick way to do it as well, you can always click on Events. And we offer the URL for the multi-GP event right here in the link. So I'll just use that, fire this back up. And what we should see now is we should see the fast laps we have here. All right, I'll go to all races, round one. And there we got three, they each did three laps. So we gave them three points here. And here's all the times. So I'll click all the times. It's one, two, and three. You see all the laps that happened. So we've completely synced up things back to multi-GP. Um, just to point out as well, uh, this is all online, so it immediately pushed it out. However, if you ran your entire event offline, which you could totally do, live time will let you do it, um, once you get home and you plug your computer back into your internet and fire up live time, it will immediately see that there are things left over that it hasn't sent up to multi-GP and will immediately sync all of those things for you. So definitely you can get your results to multi-GP whether you want to do it online right away or let LiveTime do the work for you once you get home and you have an internet connection or put it on a, you know, a, um, a hot spot for a few minutes afterwards, let it sync up or do it between rounds or whatever if you want to keep people informed if you're out in the middle of uh, a place that, that has uh, very bad internet or, or just you don't want to pay the, the data fees all day long. Okay, so that being said, that really is it. At this point, you can run and go through all the races. Just uh, go ahead and arrow through. You can, you can just arrow up to you know race two, race three, choose different um, rounds and go through it. The other thing I want to point out, though, is that in addition to what we have here, we also have been putting all of your information and results onto a website called Live FPV. So you have a full website that you can go to that's a major portal with all this extra data that we've been collecting and sending up. There's another icon up here, it's called the cloud. That is like the live time or live FPV cloud. We were sending all of our race data up there for you to be able to view. So definitely check that out. You can click on the broadcast piece here and there's a link. We'll just go right to the site here really quick and show it to you. This first of all is the live site. When we're running races, here I'll just show you real quick. I'm just gonna start a race and I'm going to start doing some, um, some races here. You'll see in the background that as we start doing uh, laps here that we're going to start seeing those same laps show up live in the website as well. So um, people can watch and get live timing as things are going. Race results that have already happened show up in your live time or live FPV website as well. Click on race results and you're going to see here's that race open FPV here and here's information. We even show you a lap by lap position graph and other information. So definitely check it out. You can tell everyone that you that uh, is a part of your event to check out your site. It's the same name you chose. We chose LRC test three, um, but it will be whatever your name is. Uh, LiveFPV.com. So definitely check that out right now. We're broadcasting that for you. And at the same time, we're pushing all your results to MultiGP. So everyone that's checking out MultiGP can take a look at those points information as well and get their standings as the as the event progresses. 
So that's the main pieces of the multi-GP piece right now. Uh, we're definitely looking at improving it and adding new features as we go. So definitely engage with us. Let us know on Facebook. Give us a call. Send us an email. Definitely work with us and let us know what you'd like to see with the integration going forward. Thanks for your time. Hope you enjoy Lifetime, and we'll see you next time.